Welcome back to the morning show. It's time for Motivational Monday. Yeah, right now many of us are feeling stressed as we look at those bills from our purchases over yep. the past few months. Financial stress can have an impact on our minds and bodies in many ways. Absolutely. And Elliot Counseling Group's clinical team leader, Rachel Bunyard, is sharing how we can take charge of our own finances and improve our overall health. Good morning. How are we doing today? Hi, good morning. I'm doing well. How are you both today? We are staying dry and staying warm for the most part. <laughs> and first and foremost, uh, can you explain to us some of those symptoms that people might be feeling if they're stressed out about their finances? Yeah, so, so like you said, it's the beginning of the year and we are noticing the bills coming in from the holidays. Uh, hopefully everyone had a wonderful holiday, maybe some impulse buying on top of those gifts. And we are looking at those bills and thinking, how are we going to pay this? Maybe even just looking ahead at the new year and trying to get ourselves on track. So uh, that certainly causes a lot of stress for people. And we see that in uh, changes in appetite. We can see that in poor sleep quality. Uh, we see that in moodiness. So maybe you're more irritable with your friends, family, your coworkers. Uh, we can also see stomach aches, headaches, you know, those physical ailments. Uh, just as stress affects us in, in many other mental and physical ways, financial stress certainly adds to uh, our, our mental well-being. And Rachel, as you were listing off some of those ailments, a lot of people I'm sure are saying, check, check, yeah. check, yeah. got all of those, right? So um, you have some ways that we can work towards financial stability. Yeah, so, so the first recommendation I would make is, is to sit down with yourself and know where your money is coming from. So get out a good old pen and paper and write down all your sources of income for the entire uh, family, the entire household. So, uh, you know, figure out where it's coming from, uh, know what you're spending your money on uh, is that second step there. Figure out where your money is going to. Uh, notice if you have money that's going out towards eating out to lunch every day, you know, can you cut back on that? Uh, know what your bills are so you know kind of what the extra spending might be. Uh, something else I, I recommend at that point would be to, to sit down and figure out, okay, my money's coming from here, it's going here, now let's sit down with the budget and figure out where I can tighten things up to help pay off some of these bills, some of this debt. Uh, the next thing I, I would recommend is, is going for those goals. So once you've set your budget, sit down with yourself and say, okay, what are some short-term goals that I can make that's gonna help motivate me to continue saving, continue, you know, just, just being really frugal with my money and maybe have some rewards that go along with those goals. Uh, so if, if I, you know, set aside uh, a $50 medical bill, maybe as a short-term goal, being able to say, maybe I'll reward myself with ice cream once that bill is paid off. A longer term goal might look like a car loan. So something that is probably a little bit more expensive for folks and really having to you know, give it your all month after month to be able to save up and, and pay that loan off. And Rachel, so, what are some of the concerns that you're hearing right now from patients? You know, I'm assuming some of the concerns that people have right now uh, in 2021 are probably a little different than they were about two years ago. Has anything really changed that you've noticed? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, that's, that's why we're bringing up the financial stress today is mm -hmm. because 2020 just really, uh, you know, affected a lot of people and where's my money going to come from? You know, how am I going to pay these bills and really having to strap down? And, and I will say that the most difficult thing that I've heard people talk about are, are folks who, you know, have families who have kids and they don't want to see anything change for them. And it really is about putting boundaries around your money to say, I need to take a realistic look at what I have and, and you know, maybe change some, some of these budgets that I've been used to to be a more realistic view of what I have now and, and hopefully to see it as a temporary situation and just work on those goals where you are today. And Rachel, a lot of people have a workout buddy for mm -hmm. some accountability, but you can have actually a financial buddy as well. Can you talk a little bit about that How and the, how that can uh, help us? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, just like exercise, having a financial accountability partner uh, helps you to stay on track with your goals. 
So find the people at work who encourage you to, you know, eat in with them rather than going out to lunch. Uh, you know, find the friends who are going to say, hey, let's do a movie and popcorn at my house instead of going out to the theater. Have friends and family who are on board with you who encourage and motivate and support you to reach those goals. Uh, and, and, you know, try to maybe set some limits with the folks who like to spend and, and maybe have the financial means to do that. And Rachel, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of people are, you know, a little bit more visual when it comes to saving money and then cutting costs as well. And uh, they really need to see that progress being made. What recommendations would you have to, I guess, visualize this process altogether? Yeah, well, I'm sure people have seen when a town or city has a goal, they might have one of those big thermometers uh, outside City Hall. Uh, so something even like that, where each month or each week when you're able to pay off some of that debt, working towards your goals, uh, just mark off a little bit more of that thermometer so that you can see the progress going up. The more that we see that, the more motivated we become in paying off those debts, paying off towards those goals. And Rachel, if somebody is interested in getting a little extra help, how can they get in touch with you? Oh, yes. So Elliott Counseling Group, we have over 30 uh, licensed therapists. We are in Urbana, Champaign, Tuscola, and we actually moved into the Mattoon, Charleston area offering telehealth services. Uh, so give us a call. Uh, we have some wonderful staff members who uh, will get you hooked up with services as, as soon as possible. And uh, we are happy to talk about your financial goals and, and any anything else that might be stressing you out these days and, and to help improve the quality of your life. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you this Monday. All right, thank you. Take care. <laughs> Amelia has your forecast next. We'll be right back.